Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today I'm going to show you something new. Um, a few days ago I released this new project on GitHub. It's called API Fairy and it is my take on how a, an API framework for Flask should look like. Uh, I've been doing this uh, without being an extension for a while. I, I've used uh, something similar to this in many projects and now I thought it was time to to generalize it and make it into a proper extension that others can use as well. So what I'm going to do in this video is add API Ferry to a very simple API project that you can see here on the left uh, with, with just one endpoint and I hope this is going to help you see how this works and evaluate if this is something that you like and that you would like to use on your projects. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going to start by adding the extension to this little API. Um, so from API Ferry import API Ferry, and this is this is the usual thing. So it works like every other Flask extension that you know. Uh, so I'm going to initialize it, pass the application instance. And now um, this adds one more endpoint, uh, which is slash docs. So if now I go to localhost slash docs, I have uh, a brand new documentation page that is completely empty because at this point the extension doesn't know anything about the project. So. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to, I'm going to start by setting the uh, the title and the version, uh, which go in the configuration. So uh, let's set API Fairy title, oops, to um, my test project, for example, and then let's set a version as well to one zero. So saving this, when I come here and refresh, now I have the title correctly set. Um, you may want to add some written documentation uh, and you can do that by adding a doc string on your main module. So uh, we can say here, uh, I don't know, welcome to my test project documentation and this is marked down so you can now say uh, overview here we have an overview of this API let's say so now when I refresh now I get this and we have the whole uh, the whole documentation here is added to to the docs endpoint um, so this, uh, this project relies heavily on Marshmallow. So you have to use Marshmallow schemas for everything. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a schema that represents this, uh, this response, the response that we have in this endpoint. So I'm going to start by adding the, uh, the Flask Marshmallow um, extension so and this one is initialized the same uh, let's put it before before the other one like that and then uh, let's create a schema this is going to be a user schema which inherits from from the uh, the base class the marshmallow uh, base schema class uh, and this one is going to have an ID which is an integer uh, a username which is a string and just for fun let's add one more thing let's say the name of the user which is going to be a string and let's put a default on this one uh, no name so now we have a schema here and uh, next 
I'm going to use one of the decorators that come with API Ferry to, uh, to define that this is the, the schema that applies to this endpoint. So I'm going to say response and here user schema. And let's import the response decorator from, from the extension. So if I come here now and refresh, now I have uh, have the documentation for for this endpoint, and the only thing that is documented at this point is the response because that's the only thing API Ferry knows about it. Uh, but uh, you can see that it shows the uh, the format of the response. Uh, it assumes by default that it returns a 200 status code, uh, which I can actually change. So let's try. Uh, so let's say here I can I can give it let's say it's a 201. So now it's going to be 201 by default. Uh, so note that the ID argument from the flash route was also uh, detected as a path parameter. So uh, so that was also documented and uh, it even got the type from uh, from the route uh, specification. Uh, so other things that we can do, um, we can do a query string, for example. Let's say uh, we want to add, this is kind of weird because this is a very simple example, but let's say we have pagination on this on this route for whatever reason. So we can have a um, pagination schema and uh, we can have a page which is an int and the page size, uh, which is also an int. And these ones, uh, we, we should use defaults. So in Marshmallow, you specify these uh, with missing. So if, if it's missing, this one is one. And if this one's missing, it will be, let's say, 10. So these are defaults. So now we can uh, here, oops. We can say uh, arguments, arguments, and then pagination schema. So now we are specifying that this is an input. So here in the route, we can say uh, pagination, and this is going to be a dictionary that is going to have the parsed and validated uh, elements from from this uh, schema so uh, we need to add arguments here save and now if I refresh here now we have the query parameters also added it shows the defaults and uh, it, it's basically all nicely documented uh, one more thing, uh, this is uh, this doesn't have a uh, summary, so uh, we can add, um, we can do that with a doc string. So we can say here, return a user by its ID. Oh, actually, let's say return a user, which will be the the title, and then this endpoint returns a user by its ID. Perfect. So let's refresh. And now we have it right here, the title, and then the uh, the more detailed overview and also appears here in the uh, in the sidebar. So this one also shows the, the details of the response. Uh, if I make this a little wider. There we go. So, so if there's enough uh, enough space, it shows this uh, this on the right, which is kind of nice. Uh, so, uh, what else can we do? Uh, uh, so here we have the the two hundred one response, which is the success response. But uh, maybe you want to also indicate what other uh, error responses you have. So, so there is an other responses. Uh, decorator where you say uh, with the dictionary uh, 
404 user not found and you, you can add more you know as, as many as you need that indicate what the error responses are um, so let's go ahead the other responses decorator here let's refresh so now we have uh, we have that too uh, authentication so so there's there's an authenticate uh, decorator save it there so authenticate is a decorator that works alongside my flask HTTP auth extension so instead of using the extension directly if you use it through the authenticate decorator then the, the pass through helps the uh, the documentation so so it, it helps build documentation including authentication information so uh, let's quickly add a uh, basic authentication HTTP basic auth and then let's create an object for for this authentication and add a verify password um, callback so this is going to receive username and password and just for, for this simple example uh, let's say that if the username is foo and the password is bar we are going to assume that this is valid so we are going to return the name say the name of the user so we return foo and then else we return none which will mean that uh, the uh, authentication failed uh, so now on the endpoint we can say authenticate and then pass the authentication object so so we save this and now now we have uh, our authentication section it's automatically added it shows the basic auth it shows the type and uh, this this recognizes other types um, like for example if you use token authentication this will show here if you use a custom header uh, it will also show here um, so one more thing uh, if you want to document your authentication and this is something that I, I'm not sure I'm gonna keep this way but the way it works right now is by setting a, a doc string that's really not a doc string but uh, setting it on the authentication object so uh, here you can say wh whatever you want for for documentation uh, so pass your username and password to authenticate Just keep it simple so now that appears as your documentation here as well so uh, this is pretty much it uh, so it, it's uh, as I said it's a very simple uh, extension it doesn't get in the way uh, it allows you to implement your endpoints in the way that you like doesn't force you to do anything other than uh, introducing marshmallow if you don't use it yet uh, and uh, the final thing that I'm going to show you uh, this this uh, documentation uses an open source project called Redoc uh, which is uh, standard and it can render documentation in the uh, the open API format which is what you may know as swagger from uh, from the old days now it's open API so this is open API 3 uh, version 3 and uh, Redoc renders any uh, specification that complies with this API um, so if if you wanted to see the the actual uh, the actual documentation for you know, the the source code for, for the documentation uh, that comes in a different endpoint uh, which is api spec.json this is just the the definition of the api 
documentation uh, that that Redoc renders uh, very nicely. Uh, so the final thing that I, I was going to show you is there there is a second uh, documentation renderer that I'm currently supporting, uh, which is the one from Swagger, the Swagger UI. So I'm going to switch to that one, which I, I I don't really like how it looks, but uh, but it has one additional thing that I wanted to show you. So uh, this one is Swagger UI. So I'm going to switch to that one. So now I'm going to refresh. And, and we get this, this alternative uh, rendering uh, from the Swagger UI project. So uh, overall, it's all the same. But uh, one nice thing that this this uh, documentation has is that it allows you to send requests, to send test requests. So I can come here and authorize and set uh, set my uh, my credentials. So I'm going to set full and bar. And I can log in. And now I can come here and try it out. So I can say, give me this ID, page two, uh, page size, I'll leave it, and then I can execute it. And here you can see the uh, the response. So uh, you can see that uh, we have we have the ID, which is the ID that I typed. Uh, username, I. Uh, you can see that I have it hard coded, so it's always foo. Uh, here we didn't include a name, but the schema has a default no name, so. The schema added it, and uh, basically I sent a test request. So, anyway, uh, this is this is API Ferry uh, for all those who wanted to know. Uh, I hope you find it useful. Uh, I'm particularly interested in knowing if this extension almost works for you. If there is some something that you do, some some way that you work. That uh, that you would like to th that that you like this extension to support uh, that is close but not exactly what you do because right now I I modeled this extension obviously to to match what I do uh, so anyway uh, give it a try and let me know what you think thank you bye bye.